viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Blast hits Shiite mosque in Afghanistan, dozens killed. Sri Lanka marks three years since Easter bombings. And Pakistan committing systematic genocide in Balochistan. In Afghanistan, the Shiai Hazara community have long faced persecution from the Taliban and Islamic State for their ethnicity and religious beliefs. In the aftermath of the withdrawal of international troops from Afghanistan, violence against the Hazara population has escalated. Recently, a powerful explosion in a Shia mosque in northern Afghanistan city of Mazar e Sharif killed several worshippers. The brutal attack occurred just two days after a series of explosions targeted a boys' school in Shia neighborhood of Afghan capital, Kabul. A report. Around 400 people were attending the prayers in Shiite mosque in Afghanistan's Mazar e Sharif when it was hit by a blast. The Islamic State group admitted carrying out the attack that killed dozens of worshippers. The blast, which occurred in the Islamic holy month of Ramadan, was executed using a remotely detonated booby trapped bag. The Taliban say they have defeated the Islamic State, but the group remains a serious security challenge to Afghanistan's new rulers. Other explosions were also reported in the country. One of the explosions took place in a square in Kabul city, injuring two children, while a car blew up near an airport in Kunduz, killing and injuring at least 22 people. The attacks have again challenged the Taliban's promise of security and stalked deep-seated fears in the Shiite community. <laughs> Such attacks against Shia Hazaras in Afghanistan are not new. Just a few days back, a series of explosions targeted a boys' school in Shia Hazara neighborhood of Afghan capital, Kabul. The explosions occurred inside the Abdul Rahim Shaheed High School and a nearby tuition center was also targeted in a grenade attack. At least six people were killed and several students were wounded, including one as young as seven. Witnesses who were in shock recalled the horrific moments of blast. وقتی که انفجار اول صدا کرد ما به خاطر نزدیک مکتب هستیم خانه ما همینجا نزدیک است مردم گفت که نزدیک مکتب انفجار شده باز ما دویده اومدیم گفتیم باش خیرات باشه خانه اومدیم اینجا در سر بمب بالا شدیم اینجا که باشه می اشتکا کسی هست نه اشتکای خود صدا میکردم دیگه اینجا میری بارک بود و زونمون جا گفت که انفجار شده Shia Hazara community has been frequently targeted by both the Taliban insurgents and other militant groups in Afghanistan. In a particularly devastating attack last year, bombs were set off outside a girls' school in the Shia neighborhood, killing at least 90 people, many of them teenage girls living class. In October last year, two suicide bombings at Shiite mosque killed more than 90 people and an attack on a Shia-dominated area of Herat, a major city in western Afghanistan, killed at least six people in January. The Islamic State's affiliate in Afghanistan had claimed responsibility for all these attacks. Hazaras constitute the country's third largest ethnic group and a largest religious minority community due to their Shia Muslim faith in the Sunni majority country. Their different beliefs and Asiatic features have made them easy targets. ما از دستکاران به صلاح امارات خواهش میکنیم که توجه بیشتری به مردم بکنن، امنیت مردم بگیرن. تا چه وقت به صلاح اینقدر انتحاری باشه؟ وضعیت افغانستان، وضعیت کشور ما بسیار خراب است. ما هیچ جای امنیت نداریم. Hazaras are the most discriminated minority group in Afghanistan. And the group has suffered social and economic marginalization and waves of physical attacks in the war torn country. There is an urgent need to shed light on the situation of the Hazaras 
and engage the international community to act. However, as Afghanistan is not in the center of attention anymore, unlike in August 2021, engaging the international community may be highly challenging. The lack of interest and political will to act will continue to let down this persecuted community. Month April marks three years of Easter bombings that rocked Sri Lanka in 2019. Suicide bombers killed more than 260 people and injured more than 500. The terror attack was carried out while people offered prayers during Easter celebrations. On Easter Sunday this year, people took to the streets and demanded justice for the victims of the attacks. Here is a report. 21st April 2019, six near simultaneous bombings rocked hotels and churches during Easter celebrations in Sri Lanka. Negombo, Batikola and Kozikode were in the middle of one of the worst terror attacks that the island nation had witnessed. The Shangri-La, Cinnamon Grand and Kingsbury hotels in Colombo were also targeted. More than 260 people were killed and several injured. Foreign tourists from 14 countries including India, UK, Denmark, Portugal, Japan, Spain and the US were among the victims. Hundreds of families went into mourning. The sequence and coordination of the bombings were planned to cause maximum destructions targeting Christians during worship services across the island nation and targeting guests during breakfast in beachfront hotels in the capital. According to investigators, two Muslim groups that were inspired by the Islamic State were responsible for the attack. So Islamic radicalism has always been present in Sri Lanka. I think the issue was that because of the, uh, you know, the Tamil Sinhala civil war, uh, people forgot that it even existed as a force. Uh, it, had, it hadn't reared its head because there was already enough strife. So it's, it, it's only natural that once the civil war ended at some point or the other, Islamic radicalism was going to raise its head. Growing in radicalization, yes, because what happens with these cases is it's meant to be a cyclic reaction. The main reason for carrying out a bombing is, of course, to send a message to the rest of the world but equally, it is to, you know, ensure that there are severe actions on the ground against Muslims, uh, uh, you know, reprisals or legislative reprisals, which then lead to a radicalization cycle. And that's exactly what's been achieved out here. The scale and coordination of the bombings indicated an advanced logistical capability and structure among domestic Islamist networks. A special pro-panel appointed in 2019 by former President Maitri Pala Sirisena had recommended the banning of Muslim extremist organizations who advocate radicalism in the Buddhist majority country. However, the panel was then rejected by all political parties. But then Sri Lanka banned 11 hardline Islamist organizations in the country. Among the banned organizations are local Muslim groups, including the Sri Lanka Islamic Students Movement. From mulling burqa ban to de-radicalization law, the Sri Lankan government has taken several steps as part of a crackdown against Islamic extremism in the aftermath of the Easter bombings. But such steps do not reduce risk of future violence in the country. Sri Lanka has to re-establish its intelligence coordination. During Easter Sunday bombings, media reports suggested intelligence lapses, including a lack of information sharing between the country's intelligence agencies, the president and the prime minister. Colombo needs intelligence sharing with foreign partners to deal with this challenge. The government was, the Sri Lankan government was given advance warning that something was going to happen um, and of course they ignored all the warnings including the specific warnings 
I think what happens in a situation like that, especially at the end of a civil war, of a very long, brutal civil war, is that you tend to become lax. This happens with every single country and you don't perceive or see new enemies. Because remember, it's been quite a while since there was Muslim communal violence in Sri Lanka. So I'm not surprised that they didn't take those warnings seriously. This happens with every country. Remember, there were enough warnings uh, about 9-11 as well. Um, and they were ignored because they never thought it was going to be possible. So it's it's not surprising. But I think the way the government responded after the bombing was quite significant. I think they took more steps much quicker than most other governments would. Meanwhile, on Easter Day this year, hundreds of people lit candles and displayed banners and placards during a silent protest in Colombo, calling for justice for the victims of the attacks. Relatives of victims accused the government of failing to deliver justice for the bombings. Protesters displayed a huge banner that read, It's been three years, we cry for justice. Sri Lankans dressed as the dead demand justice for victims of the Easter bombings three years ago. The tragic experience of the brutal Easter Sunday attack that happened three years ago continues to resonate in every person's mind in island nation. The situation in India's Jammu and Kashmir is tense. People in the region are suffering due to Pakistan's sponsored terrorism. Out of frustration, park-backed terrorists in the valley are killing innocent civilians and security personnel to create unrest in the valley. There have also been several clashes between the security forces and terrorists in the region in recent months. This week, before Prime Minister's visit to Samba, there is an encounter broken out there in which two Jaish terrorists have been trapped and one security personnel has been killed. We have a report. On April 22, a major attack took place in Jammu's Sunjwa area, where a bus carrying security personnel was attacked. The terror attack took place near an army installation in Jammu. Security forces retaliated and terrorists were forced to run away. Two terrorists and one CISF Jawan were killed and 10 security personnel were injured in the attack. According to security officials, the terrorists eliminated appeared to be Fidai attackers and were carrying a huge amount of ammunition. Jetla Jammu Kashmir police ko apni agencies ke saath mil kar ke raat ko mili jiski buniyad par jo operation launch kiya gaya jisme CSF CRPF aur army ki tukdiyan bhi police ke saath thi raat bhar jo operation chalta raha raat ko inhone koshish ki ke je police ka forces ka ghera tod kar ke bahar nikal jaye jiske dauran हैवी फायरिंग हुई और उस फायरिंग के अंदर हमारा जो आउटर कार्डन में लगे हुए पुलिस के और सीएसएफ के जवान थे वो कुछ जख्मी हुए और जख्मियों में से एक सीएसएफ का एएसआई एसपी पाटेल उसकी डेथ हो गई पाकिस्तान बैक्ड टेररिस्ट इन द वैली आर नॉट ओनली अटैकिंग सिक्योरिटी पर्सनल बट आल्सो टारगेटिंग इनोसेंट सिविलियंस इन द रीजन India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir has seen a sudden wave of targeted killings in recent months. In March alone, Kashmir witnessed at least eight targeted killings creating fears in the minds of people. In a view of the spike in targeted killings in the region, Indian security forces have eliminated several Pakistan-backed terrorists in the valley, following all devious agendas of Pakistan. In a recent shootout on April 14, Indian security forces neutralized four Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists in Shopian district that were linked to the recent attacks on migrant workers and civilians. Based on specific input, a cordon and search operation was launched in Badigam village of Shopian region. During the operation, the terrorists fired upon the forces, which led to an encounter. The police have identified the terrorist as Akif Farik Tokar, Wasim Ahmed Tokar, Farooq Ahmed Bhatt, and Shokin Ahmed Mir. Police also recovered arms and ammunition from the site of the encounter. 
The encounter comes against the backdrop of an increase in targeted attacks on civilians, non-locals and elective representatives in the region. Kalarat me ham log ko khabar mila tha ki Sopian ke badi gaon village me 4 se 5 terrorists chhipe hue to aaj operation launch hua hai army ke sath to search ke dauran firing shuru ho gaya jisme abhi tak Laskar Toba ka local 4 terrorists mare gaye hain aur abhi search kar rahe hain ham log ka andesha hai ek danish hai wo bhaga hua hai usko bhi un khoj rahe hain the latest incident of ongoing targeted killings in Kashmir is the cold-blooded murder of Manzoor Ahmed Bangru. Manzoor was a serpent and he was shot dead by terrorists in Baramulla district on April 15. He is the fourth panchayat member to be killed by terrorists in Kashmir since last month. On March 9, an independent serpent, Samir Bhatt, was shot dead on the outskirts of Srinagar. A week earlier, terrorists killed a panchayat member, Mohammad Yaqub Dar, in Srandu area of Kulgam district. Manzoor's killing serves as a grim reminder of how, in the garb of waging armed struggle, Pakistan-backed terrorists are hell-bent on converting what is otherwise considered paradise on earth into a living hell. Their motto is simple and clear, that is to infuse fear and unpredictability among the people and also make the Indian nation know that they exist. These sort of uh, random killings have been going on after Article 370 was uh, abrogated and this is because there are the other people who were trained and who were picking up arms and all are now either eliminated or have gone underground. Now, these people are those underground overground workers whom ISI has now directed to do these targeted killings of all non-Muslims over there, whosoever is there. Earlier it was some Kashmiri party, now this boy is, was a driver from some other state who was there. This is just to give a message across and also to make headlines that Kashmir Valley is not free from terrorism. And now the challenge before security forces is to get hold of all these underground overground workers to ensure that once these uh, overground, uh, underground workers are caught and put behind bars, then only will Kashmir Valley be free from all terrorism and militancy. Thousands of Kashmiris have lost their lives in proxy wars orchestrated by Pakistan and they continue to suffer due to terrorist groups supported by the Pakistan Army and spy agency, the ISI. Islamabad is unlikely to end its proxy war in Kashmir because it's the most cost-effective way of bleeding India through a thousand cuts. Hence, authorities in Kashmir need to tackle the situation. Jammu and Kashmir police and security forces have to work in synergy as hard intelligence is required to tackle the situation. There is an urgent need to break the chain of these attacks. Let's move to Pakistan, which is a rock state with no law and justice. The Pakistani state and its security agencies have habitually trampled on the human rights of the people in the name of security and territorial integrity. Balochistan is the biggest victim, where people are often charged with treason, branded as terrorists and killed in encounters. Pakistani forces in the province are involved in extrajudicial killings and this has been the strategic design to rule on and dominate the people. A report. Hamidullah Baloch was a driver who used to earn a living by going to the Pak-Afghan border. Recently, when he was returning home, Pakistani paramilitary forces opened fire on his vehicle in the Panchunayak area near the border, killing him on the spot. He had three young children who were waiting for him to come back so he could buy them new clothes for Eid. All they got was a glimpse of his face in a coffin. Following this brutal extrajudicial killing, a shutdown strike was observed to mount pressure on the administration to arrest the accused person involved in the killing. However, in retaliation, the forces opened indiscriminate fire and injured several protesters. In another incident, the Baloch drivers in the same region were compelled to leave their vehicles and make the arduous journey back home 
through the scorching desert. After several hours of trekking in the desert, some fortunate souls spotted a vehicle and sought help, but others did not survive. At least three drivers died of dehydration and starvation while making the journey. In a video that became viral on social media, the dead bodies of the drivers can be seen lying in the desert. The incident reflects a cold-blooded disdain for basic humanity and the right to life. हमारे बॉर्डर के इलाके में जनाब स्पीकर साहब लोगों का रोजमर्रा या कारोबार जो है वो बॉर्डर ट्रेड से एक नौजवान गाड़ी में जा रहा था जब उसके रुकने की इशारा किया गया तेल लेके जा रहा था शायद जब वो नॉट रुका तो उस पर फायर हुआ और उसको शहीद किया गया तो लोगों ने एहतजाज किया वहाँ पे हमारी लॉ इन्फोर्मेंट एजेंसी ने बॉर्डर बंद किया लोगों की गाड़ियों से लोगों को उतारा और उनको कहा कि पैदल जाए इस रमजान के महीने में तीन से चार लोग प्यास और भूख से जो है तड़प तड़प कर उस रेगिस्तान में जो है शहीद हो गए द बलोच कम्युनिटी इन पाकिस्तान हैज क्रॉस बॉर्डर रिलेशन विद अदर बलोच पीपल इन बोथ अफगानिस्तान एंड ईरान With poor economic and livelihood opportunities in their own areas, many Baloch families survive only through cross-border trade. For the Pakistani establishment, it is such a big crime that culprits should be brutally killed. The Baloch are deprived of their political rights and are targeted with state violence and oppression. Thousands of people have disappeared without trace in province since a separatist insurgency gained momentum. in 2007 a large number of dead bodies have been found since then there is a long list of baloch students and intellectuals in the troubled province who have gone missing many prominent baloch activists have been targeted especially those who have fled pakistan and have been living abroad balochistan has been struggling for its rights this struggle has taken the form of an open rebellion and a demand for independence many have lost their lives honor and property in an environment of deplorable violation of human rights pakistan balochistan mein natural resources pe khub exploitation kar raha hai aur baloch ki jo daulat hai wo loote ja rahe hain punjabi fauji वैसे तो पेट्रोल गैस और दूसरे नेचुरल रिसोर्स हैं वो दबा के एक्सप्लोइट किए जा रहे हैं और कोई रोकने वाला नहीं कोई पूछने वाला नहीं है और वो दौलत कहाँ जाती है कि बलूचिस्तान में तो लोगों के पास कोई भी सहूलियत नहीं है बेसिक ह्यूमन राइट्स नहीं है बेसिक ह्यूमन नीड्स जो होती हैं वो पूरी नहीं होती वह ना बिजली है ना गैस है साफ पीने का पानी नहीं है हस्पताल नहीं है मेडिकल फैसिलिटीज़ नहीं है एजुकेशन फैसिलिटीज नहीं है बेसिक स्कूल्स नहीं है यूनिवर्सिटी कॉलेजेस तो छोड़ें द मीडिया ब्लैकआउट एंड स्टेट सैंक्शन अगेंस्ट फ्री प्रेस इन बलूचिस्तान हैव इम्बोल्ड द फोर्सेज टू कमिट मोर अट्रोसिटीज एंड सप्रेस बलूचिस्तान डेमोक्रेटिक वॉइस पाकिस्तान विच इज कमिटिंग वॉर क्राइम्स इन ब्रॉड डे लाइट एंड बिफोर द आईज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड शुड अंडरस्टैंड that the oppressor cannot remain oppressor forever and the oppressed will not remain oppressed forever and with that we come to the end of this edition of news week south asia we will be back next week with more news views and analysis from the subcontinent meanwhile do keep writing to us at nwsa@nin.com This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.